Boom. What is up, Waves Capital? It's Roy, it's Jacob. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be watching two short video clips featuring two investing legends giving their opinions on the macroeconomic outlook. Okay? These two titans of Wall Street are Stanley Druckenmiller and Ken Griffin. Okay? The first video we're going to be watching is titled Stanley Druckenmiller Sees Hard Landing in 2023 with a possible deeper recession than many expect. And the second is titled Ken Griffin Says Fed Has Not Done Enough Must Continue on Its Path to Reset Inflation Expectations. And he actually references some things that Druckenmiller says, so I figured we'd watch it in this order. These two clips are coming directly from the CNBC Delivering Alpha Investor Summit, which at the time of recording just went on this morning. So these clips are brand new, but they are evergreen. And uh, the things that these two, again, investing legends say here will have resounding effects and will be applicable as far as underlying principles are concerned for the foreseeable future. Again, Druck and Miller's talking about 2023. Griffin is kind of just parlaying off of what Druck said and going into what the Fed should do. So this is really at the core of macro. What these guys are discussing is at the core of macro. And as a trader, as an investor, this will 100% impact your investments, your trades, and this is very, very necessary information to have. So again, I really want to give credit to CNBC here. It's, it's rare that I've made a video where I'm just sitting down and watching videos with you guys, but uh, I stumbled across these more than did share it in the newsletter and I felt uh, compelled to share it with the YouTube fam as well. At the end of the video, I will talk about kind of my take on the markets right now and why I'm still bearish and where I think the markets need to go prior to really reversing, but we'll cover to that at the end. Um, let's first watch over these two videos. Uh, I'm not going to say anything until they're done. So we got, <laughs> what do we got? Like, we have like five minutes of just watching. So sit back, relax, let's watch over this. Uh, and then at the end, I'll give you guys my two cents and again, go into kind of my thoughts on the market right now and how I'm trading through this personally. Okay, so let's get to watching. I don't know if I should make this, maybe not. I'll just keep it this size, okay? We'll be stunned this if we don't have a recession in 23. Let's max it the up. timing, but certainly by the end of 23, I will not be surprised if it's not larger than the so-called average garden variety. And I don't rule out, not my forecast, but I don't rule out something really bad. Why? Because if you look at the liquidity situation that has driven this, um, we're gonna go from all this QE to QT, we're following an asset bubble. Um, we've been doing all this uh, running down on the SBR, which is now, that's the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. It's now below 84 levels, even though obviously oil consumption is much higher. Um, we've had a bunch of myopic policies that have actually delayed the liquidity shrinkage. QT has been almost entirely offset by Janet Yellen running down the Treasury savings account. By the way, pretty amazing policy. She could have sold 10 years for under 1% during this time Instead, she runs down the Treasury savings account. So all that has mass liquidity shrinkage, but it really comes into full gear. And she can continue this for a while. We can do the SPR for a while, stimulative stuff. But by the first quarter of 23, it kind of goes the other way. So our central case is a hard landing by the end of 23. But I don't know. The, I've been wrong on a lot of things. I could be wrong on this, but since I do it for a living, that's our forecast, which is recession <laughs> in 23. I really like what he said there. Uh, so <clears throat> I lied. I guess I will. Wait, let's cancel that. Again, you guys, the Fed is really at the core of the argument that he's making right there. And really some uh, some other clips I watched, I won't, we won't watch through all those, but I do once again recommend you guys go, go to CNBC, watch some of the clips they posted from this delivering alpha summit. There's just so many greats giving their opinions there. So it's always good to just get a diverse set of opinions so you can kind of formulate your own based upon those educated opinions. But um, again, you guys, there are just so many moving pieces. We've been talking about them for so long and I'm sorry I am talking before watching this video, I lied. But um, yeah, you guys, the macroeconomic forecast is not good. And again, Anyone, all of us could be wrong about these forecasts, but again, as traders, as investors, you weigh the odds based on the data sets you have available 
and make the most rational and logical conclusion, at least in your mind, that you possibly can. Okay, so let's watch. Again, uh, Ken Griffin does parlay off of some things that Drucker Miller said. So let's watch this, and then I will close it out with uh, this little money, money whirlpool. All right. <clears throat> Griffin, Citadel. Enough to, to this point in time that they should stop and, and wait. It speaks I'm going to root. Do be, you think that they go. have done enough to, to this it's not really point in time that sorry. they should stop and, and wait? It speaks to the when and the how much of another rate, cut, uh, rate hike and, and if and when um, that happens. H have they done enough? Should they let it go through the system like some suggest they should? So, so from my vantage point, absolutely not. Like we should continue on the path that we're on to ensure that we re-anchor inflation expectations. There's a psychological component to inflation that we need to make sure that our country doesn't start to assume that we should expect five or six or 7% inflation because once you expect it broadly enough, it becomes reality. It become what he just said is so important, not only in regard to inflation, but so many other aspects of the financial markets because so much of it is ultimately based in psychology. So again, you have to play that game theoretical aspect of trading. We always talk about that. Let's keep going. Table stakes in wage negotiations, for example. So it's important that we don't that we don't let inflation expectations become on anchor. But I will tell you, I think that the Fed has another challenge, which is if Stan Druckenmiller is right, let's just stipulate he is, and we go into a deep recession late next year, and we're going to have had millions of Americans unemployed back to back twice in a three and change year period. And from, a, from, a, from the perspective of our nation, the loss of human capital that that implies is devastating. To be unemployed twice in such a short period of time, the diminution of job skills, career experience, derailment to future aspirations, a belief that the American dream is not achievable, those cultural and, and tangible impacts are really devastating. So for choice, if I am the Fed, I want to try to bring inflation expectations down, but I don't want to create a hard landing because of the cost in human capital. You think that they can actually control that? No, I think that's a really difficult dance they're trying to do right now. But you, you know, you're dealing with very lagged effects. You raise rates today, it impacts very small sectors of the economy very sharply. The follow-on knock-on effects will take six to 12 months to play out. It's a really difficult job they have. Stan, you know, aside from suggesting that there was good- I've always said as many as, as critical as many are of Jerome Powell, it's like a job. That's a crazy job to have, I would not like, can you do better? Be a, a hard landing at some point next year. Suggested you could have something much worse than that. Do you think we could? I mean, it's possible. It's, it's, it's always, I mean, here's the problem with economics. And, you know, I, I spent three years of my life pulling my hair out at Harvard studying economics. There is no answer. There's just distributions. There's just what may happen. And of course, there's some distribution that says we're going to go into a, a significant recession or depression. You know, asset price, I can give you that story. I can give you that, that really bearish story. I'm not sure it serves much purpose. Mm. One should always think about that in terms of their portfolio allocation. Can I, with, can I endure the losses in my portfolio that would go with, with a severe recession or depression? I should be aware of that possibility. Stay but edged. you want to think about managing your portfolio over, the, over your life and over your ability to sustain your risk positions over the journey of your life. In other words, you don't want to own so many equities that when the inevitable recession happens, you're forced to sell at the bottom. That's, that's a much more important concept for investors to understand and to focus on than trying to prognosticate as to when the next recession is going to happen. Okay. So, I mean, I really don't have much to add there. Let's cancel that. Pause that so it doesn't keep going. But, again, you guys, there's so many, so many micro macro factors that lend themselves to not just objective down like objective bearish fundamentals and a very very dark and dismal economic outlook over the course of the next 6 12 18 months maybe even 24 months next two years um but again you guys investor psychology is so low uh the fed even though 
again, I just said like that's not a job that I nor the far majority of people would want nor be nearly as capable of as drone pet. Like these guys know what they're doing. It may seem like they don't know what they're doing, but they're doing probably the best possible job that they can. And um, it still seems to many that they aren't doing their job. And that is still what many people think. And even I think that I obviously do think that at times I've said that before, but uh, I get you guys my worry that I've had since the Fed started raising interest rates. And although they've it, like, again, there is a lagging, there is a definite lag on the raise of interest rates that, that, that uh, again, Ken Griffin said it, it impacts certain subsectors very, very sharply. But the far majority of things, it, it takes six to 12 months to actually make an impact. So we won't know for quite a while if the Fed raising interest rates is actually combating inflation because it has become so embedded in so many weird aspects and so many fringe aspects of the economy. Um, that's my worry is that as much as they raise rates, it's still not going to combat inflation. And then once that happens, that's kind of like, that's a very dark scenario. Hopefully that is not the scenario, but, um, only time will tell. Okay. But until then my thoughts on the market, um, I mean, if there aren't any bullish arguments, obviously you can, you can try to like time bounces. There's going to be a lot of technical traders trying to play oversold conditions. And, uh, there might be some little, uh, short-term rallies to the upside that result in being bull traps, which is kind of what I think we're seeing now. Um, but I'll, I'll just give you guys my quick take here. I'll, I'm just going to read through this. Um, this is from my trade alert newsletter that I just wrote this morning. Um, so uh, let's read through this. I'll expand anywhere I feel necessary and then we'll call it a day. Based upon my tone, I'm sure you can assume that I'm still bearish. I remain hopeful for select growth stocks, a charge point ride, a few names that have been performing very, very well, even amongst the volatility, but it seems irrational to me not to believe that further downside is ahead for the major indices. Trading and investing is a game that's heavily dependent upon timing. You can be 100% right about a specific upside or downside target, but if your timing is off, you are not going to win. I say this because I've experienced this scenario many times in my career, and it can and will happen many times again. Maybe it takes months, many months, for the S&P 500 to revert to its mean, which I believe is the February 2020 high at 340. For those of you who may not know, that is my ultimate downside target at the very least. But I believe in the efficiency of the markets. The markets now, today, are far more efficient than they've ever been <clears throat> due to the access to information, not only by institutions, but retail investors as well, which makes things more efficient, which makes that mean reversion more efficient as well. And uh, it allows us to, as I've been saying in the newsletter a lot, rip off the bandaid, just rip off the bandaid, get it over with, right? So we can move on. And my money remains on the fact that this level is coming sooner than later. So if you guys are part of Waves Cap, if you want to join it, that's the first link down below and take it to this page. But if you guys are part of Waves Cap, you know that our put options, we timed this recent pullback pretty damn well. And exactly as we planned, exactly what our game plan was, Take profits from these puts and slowly redistribute them in to call options, longer term call options, because this could take a while for the dust to sell. Longer term call options on some of our favorite growth stock names. Again, just meant charge point ride being a couple of them. There are, of course, many more. Um, only a small part of the call portfolio, but so far, so good. You guys, if you want to join Waves Capital for real, if you want to step up your trading investing game, first thing down below takes you to this page. Hit this one. Obviously, complete portfolio daily newsletter. You do receive the multiple newsletters I send out every morning. This is the trade alert newsletter where I discuss a little bit of macro and the trades I've made that day. That is more timely. And then the next one is the price targets newsletter going over any relevant price targets and charts with you guys. Um, so if you're interested, 15 bucks a month, 40 every three months, try free for seven days. If you don't like it, always unsubscribe, but I trust you'll be sticking around. And if you do, welcome to the winning team in advanced. Okay, again, that's the first thing down below. Let me know in the comments down below as well what you think about the videos we watched, what you think about the the economy. Uh, right now, things are very uncertain, but uh, if you were to give an educated guess on what the next six to 12 months looks like, please let me know down below, and uh, I look forward to talking to you downstairs. Okay, until next time, always remember, take action, make waves. Peace.